Hello ladies, I'm Lydia from the Home Living Blog. I don't have comments on the YouTube videos because I wasn't interested in having something else to monitor. So my purpose for making these videos was to enhance and reinforce what I'm writing on my blog. I will leave a link for you to go and look at that and you can leave a comment there. And I appreciate it very much. I also am so happy to be back making a video. I haven't done one in such a long time that people began to um, ask questions. When are you going to do your next video? So what do I do it for now? To keep you quiet. And also this uh, is a time that I have taken off my gloves and put on my apron. And that means, I hope, that I'm probably going to sound a little bit more firm. And today's subject is all about discouragement and avoiding it. And so I did make a few notes, which I will read, read off of my script. I wasn't sure I'd be able to remember everything. Usually I can, but first of all, I'd like to thank everybody for the way they motivate me just by their comments and their visits to my blog and those who send their donations. I get a new energy to do all sorts of things and it's made me think how much the homemakers or homebound people really need to be reinforced and given appreciation and affirmation. And this led me to the subject of discouragement. You know any enemy that wants to win a battle without fighting, all they have to do is demoralize or discourage someone. And two of my favorite subjects in the Bible are the story, number one, the one in uh, Numbers of the story of uh, Joshua and Caleb. Ten spies went into the land of Canaan to get information from Moses as to what kind of food they had. They had to bring samples back of uh, the fruit and they had to take a survey of the land and bring back a report as to what kind of cities or were they just camps or what 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 were they like and they were encouraged I think to bring back a good report but they all brought back a bad report saying that the um, there were giants in the land and it would just be too hard for them but Joshua and Caleb said we can take the land I think you've heard that phrase a few times in politics recently and the other one was the story of Nehemiah. It's just amazing. Uh, and then there was another story in uh, Joshua. Let me go back to that one first, where the army of Israel uh, took over a city and won a battle just by making a lot of noise. So, you know, the enemy knows they can make a lot of noise and discourage you. And they can, and when they cannot meet your arguments or your re, be reasonable with you or reason with you, they just attack. And so these are part of the things that lead to discouragement. And then the other uh, example that I really liked was in Nehemiah when uh, the walls of Jerusalem were being rebuilt and the workers were being constantly assaulted with what I call trolls, ancient trolls telling them they weren't going to be able to do it. And there was even a remark by somebody from the outside saying, you call that a wall? Why, even a little fox that walked over it could knock that over. And they all began to complain to Nehemiah. And I think eventually he uh, gave them a weapon in one hand and a tool in the other and said, you take care of it. So I'm going to try to figure out what uh, the tool and the weapon would be for the homemaker when she's assaulted with discouragement, either personally dis personal discouragement coming from her own um, feelings or from within the family or from without. So one of my favorite uh, things to read about on the web or to listen to uh, is, is tort law. I don't know if you've ever heard this, but we... We briefly covered it when we were homeschooling because we had a book called America Land of Fair Play and it covered just a little bit of everything to get the students interested in how America worked. And so 
a couple of laws that I studied made me think how much homemakers or homebound people really need to be reinforced and given appreciation and not be run down or attacked. So the subject of discouragement. Uh, there is a law, uh, which is a common law, which pro prohibits anyone pr pr from um, stopping the free activity of anyone's business, of anyone's livelihood. You cannot uh, interfere with someone's livelihood. So uh, anybody that tries to interfere with uh, something you're selling, uh, or even in even online, you're, they're not supposed to do anything to prevent you earning a living it's, and I think that's just so marvelous what other country has that I don't know but imagine having a law that is against anybody who tries to ruin your business so I read about something uh, called tortury or tortury interference and I found some parallels with homemaking which I want to share with you and many homemakers stay home because of a strong sense of responsibility to their families and to the house, the home, the care of the home. And most of us do it from conviction, not because we're expecting money. And uh, so people dismiss us because why would you worry about discouraging a housekeeper? Uh, She's not uh, earning any money, so we're not preventing her business, but that's not entirely true. Most of us are doing it from convictions. Uh, and if you uh, are familiar with the Bible, our convictions are based on 1 Timothy 5.14 and Titus 2 and many other scriptures. So let me explain the difference between a conviction and a preference. A preference is where you like doing something, but if you had to quit, it wouldn't bother you. You could go do something else. A conviction is you not only like doing something, you think that it is important and it's true and you must do it and nothing can stop you nothing can discourage you and you would not trade it for anything um so you, the homemaking is your business and your livelihood in a in an indirect way because you are building a business of uh, your own economy and so you're looking after the income that your family has now whether you have it from an annuity or a pension or a, uh, a job that your husband has, or maybe the two of you earn money together, it's still your business. And so you're looking after your family through love and dedication. And it's a mistake to think that women at home do not create any kind of wealth or that their efforts come to nothing of material or spiritual value. If you want to investigate this sometime, uh, the worth of a woman at home, you can find many articles that list the contribution, their contributions and value. Many of us who've had grandparents who passed away uh, noticed that they left something for someone else and were often astonished at the wealth they had built up uh, in their lifetime. They had houses that could be sold and land and and savings. So it was it was probably they had quite a bit just being home and so uh, not only that but the things they do of spiritual value are so important now I found uh, some some more parallels in this um, and, and I, my purpose is to show you how discouragement comes along and how you can refute it. There is also another law that, that uh, we discovered in homeschooling when we were just, this is not a serious study, but we just briefly came across some of these in this book. Um, and that was, there is a law against walking by someone who is in, in distress or trouble or is hurt. You have to call for help or help them yourself. It's, you cannot... You can't even walk past an animal that's been hit by a car. You have to report it. So uh, we have a great respect for life. And many times uh, the homemaker can feel distress or be in distress because someone verbally attacked her and everybody just shrugs their shoulder because they feel like that's part of the territory. She should just sit there and take it. So I want to discuss some of these things on this, uh, this video. 
and so we cannot impede anybody's business and or stop the flow of their livelihood you cannot do anything to interfere with anyone's business now this is uh, those of you who have visited the US and want to uh, and have commented to me on how things look in America and how different they are maybe in from the country you're in one of the reasons that can be explained as to how things work is that you're not supposed to interfere with business and so anything that interferes with business is um, illegal and you can't even walk past someone with an injury and leave them unrescued you cannot go into a, an establishment a business establishment of any kind and, and throw a big fit and have a fight and start throwing things you cannot write uh, rude messages on the walls of their outside of their buildings anything that interferes with business business has business is paramount so uh, you can't even put a child in harm's way by leaving them in a car without a parent in there so taking these two laws together let's look at how uh, the homemaker is is treated and while we understand that it's uh, illegal to impede anyone's livelihood or business the homemaker is often overlooked people feel free to demean and more demoralize I've even heard grown children demoralizing their mother as a homemaker and and the husbands I've heard that too uh, because she's a homemaker and I've seen it online in the most vicious attacks that I, I believe uh, I've ever read have been against me and a couple of other women and they're without shame and they do not allow her to identify the accuser in other real life such as police work or the court system an accused person has the right to f uh, face their accuser online people hide behind their screens while wrecking the livelihood of homemakers now homemakers often get donations or they might have a little online store or they might monetize if they have a blog and uh, a feminist or any kind of hater would not allow it to happen to any feminist who wants to have a career but a homemaker who gets donations or has a shop online or has monetized simply encouraging others is often attacked and uh, no thought given to what she they, they feel that she's not in a career and while a feminist would never tolerate anyone preventing them from getting paycheck they would prevent the lady at home from broadcasting her message and they'd ruin her reputation which would ruin her donations or any collecting any little money from it there is by the way no competition between the working woman and the woman at home since one earns a great deal more and the other is not trying to take it from her however there are those women who think a woman whose choice to stay at home deserves a loss of income and a loss of personal confidence uh, they do not want her to be comfortable they cannot accept the fact that she's happy um, and other times the lady at home is downgraded by her own relatives who do not want her to succeed now I don't know if you've ever studied the problem of narcissism but every narcissist knows that it is easy to defeat someone just by messing with their emotions or planting a debilitating thought in their minds um, sometimes all it takes to make someone lose heart is telling the mother or the wife or the homemaker that she's worthless taking up space a parasite uneducated uh, low IQ that's another one of my pet subjects is this IQ business because it has a very sordid past history uh, and it certainly can't be trusted but it's often used to demean people unless she learns to laugh it off she will end up sick in bed and <laughs> so I'm going to offer some ideas about this let me preface this by saying how important it is not to allow these false accusations to sink deep under your skin or to make you so deep with grief that you drown in your own tears um, that reminds me of Mr. S. I was getting after him because we were on a trip and I, we were going rather fast because we were in very fast traffic and I said to him, um, you know, uh, you're going 70 miles an hour. That's awfully fast and that's over the speed limit. Of course, everybody else was too and you're not allowed to impede traffic. You cannot go the speed limit if it impedes traffic and if it's too slow 
So he said, my dear, I wish you wouldn't criticize me unjustly. I'm not going 70 miles an hour. I'm going 80. So anyway, that's, uh, that's just a funny illustration of a false accusation. So you can learn to be humorous like that too. Like when they tell you something that to, uh, intended to demean you, you say, well, you know, that's unjust. I don't just sit around all day. I sat around all week <laughs> or something like that. It is particularly hard. Goodness sakes, I'm having trouble with my script here. So I will just. Uh, it's particularly hard for a woman to keep house, to be cheerful, to raise her children, and to serve her family, and to be a good helper, a help me for her husband, if she has been demeaned. Often, um, if you demean a homemaker, you've taken away her, her homemaking because her heart is in it. And when you affect their emotions and their heart, it's hard for them to put themselves in it with any enthusiasm or joy. So that is one reason that I wanted to address this. Now, you can find a lot of articles on uh, the value of a a woman you could even I remember one woman that I knew in her kitchen had a a list that she had printed off of what everything cost how much it cost to do the laundry if you had to pay someone uh, if you had to pay someone to do the laundry if you had to hire someone to cook if you had to hire someone to clean uh, this she had a list on how much it cost uh, and it was per month or per year and that really was impactive to her children and to her husband to see that up there every day. So no one is should be allowed to, I don't know how, you know, you can't stop people when they decide to behave rudely. Um, and no one, but one thing you can ask them is, did you know that it's illegal to demean and demoralize someone while they're working? <laughs> And I would suggest that you, if you're raising children, don't demean and demoralize your children uh, in their life or while they're, while they're doing their duty at home um, because it makes them lose the incentive to do it. Nobody likes to be pushed. Um, and no one likes to be, you, you cannot have the same creative instinct if someone is demanding uh, something from you. So as we as we scroll down here at some of my script um, I mentioned that there's nothing wrong with uh, being proud of your job and even though that you might not see money from it you do get a profit so the lady at home is often downgraded by other people and but not a, not everyone if you'll notice it's one person once in a while but that can often slay you so that you just you just lose uh, confidence you lose heart and so it's not everybody a lot of people do have respect for women at home so it's particularly hard when criticism comes from your own home there's not much refinement or kindness going around, and it is common for young people and even husbands to say something very, very derogatory. Now, in public life, people could get in a lot of legal trouble for not rescuing someone or calling someone for rescue. And let the attitude before, be, uh, towards the full-time homemaker today is astonishingly negative. Now, I remember my parents used to say, if we got a little bit uppity, they used to say, would you talk to your teachers like that? Would you talk to the police like that? Would you talk to the librarian? Places that we had been. And uh, so uh, that always straightened you up that if you, you know, your parents were adults too and they were in authority too, you cannot be so familiar with them, overly familiar with them, that you treat them badly. So a woman who is demeaned cannot be as effective when she's criticized. So besides cruel, sharp replies from people, there are also many things that happen in life to make you feel discouraged. The death of a loved one, husband leaving, rebellious children, financial disaster, natural disaster, loss of home, and illness, and much, much more. 
So here are some things that come to mind when thinking of ways to keep from being totally wiped out by a cruel remark or cruel circumstances in life. Now, I don't know if I've done a very convincing job of this, but some of it might make sense. So take what you want and throw out the rest. When someone attacks you, turn the attack into ability. Now the way I do that is, aha, they're attacking me for such and such. I'm just going to do something better. I'm going to do more. Uh, for instance, online, when I got a very threatening letter on email from a, a troll, which you couldn't, you couldn't even trace them, that... Um, I should not repeat so many things in my blog, like I said something and then repeated it on a, in another post. I thought, well, I'm just going to make some more posts on that subject for them. And uh, turn the sarcasm that's aimed at you into success. Oh, somebody's being sarcastic? Well, I'm just going to do more of this and I'm going to do it better and bigger. And uh, turn the liability into a lesson learn a lesson from it, write a lesson about it, teach a lesson about it, um, tell. Now I think it's really important when you're when you're raising your kids. If they notice someone is in your home is criticizing you, when these people leave, instead of being silent because you're too polite to say anything rude about them or or critical, I think it's really important to tell your children that person was rude. Don't you ever talk to anyone like that. And don't, and you'll notice I don't talk to people like that. That person was very, very rude. He will not be invited back into our home. And uh, so turn, and then turn the criticism in creativity because it can feel, make you feel very run down. You need to get up and start doing something beautiful. Turn the debilitation that you feel into determination. Turn the accusations into aspirations. Uh, make some plans and some dreams. Make a list of things you'd like to do or like to be if you had another life. This this is really the renewing of your mind, it's like the Bible talks about, the renewing of your mind so that you can see what's that good and acceptable uh, in the sight of God. Turn complaints into compliments. Turn condemnation into construction. Turn hate into humor. That, I think, is Mr. S's very uh, expert ability. Uh, I've never seen anything quite like it. And turn grief into grit. Now, you might want to look that word grit up. It's just an amazing word. I think it comes from the South, possibly from Texas. <clears throat> there are women I have known who have gone on to their reward with great handicaps. They've had great handicaps in their lives. And they've risen from such other types of things that probably most of us will never know. And while we might today have a total meltdown from some of these things, there was a generation before us that drew from within themselves courage and were given strength. Now, there is a scripture in the Bible that says, Have courage and I will give you strength. So courage is something you're going to muster up within yourself and then let God give you the strength. To live productively. I think most of the time we're begging God for courage, but what we need to do is uh, muster up the courage and ask for strength. And there's a poem that I have seen in uh, old church bulletins. It always impressed me because before I heard it, I had not understood how much uh, we expect out of life and how much we are dealt the opposite of what we had hoped for. And this poem, for our lack of more accurate description, it's, it's more like prose, it helps us understand what to do with defeat. And it was written by a Christian Confederate soldier in the 1800s, supposedly. I don't know, but I liked the poem. Somebody wrote it who was very spiritual. I asked God for strength that I might achieve. I was made weak that I might learn humbly to obey. I asked for health that I might do greater things. I was given infirmity that I might do better things. I asked for riches that I might be happy. 
I was given poverty that I might be wise. I asked for power that I might have the praise of men. I was given weakness that I might feel the need of God. I asked for all things that I might enjoy life, and I was given life that I might enjoy all things. I got nothing that I asked for, but got everything I had hoped for. Almost despite myself, my unspoken prayers were answered. I am among people most richly blessed. If you're guiding young people, I would recommend this poem to dissect and analyze and illustrate with possible examples. Ask, how does weakness make you turn to God? How does an infirmity make you do better things? Now, I'll just give you an example of uh, Mr. S. He had a uh, foot injury and he was laid up quite a while, but while he was laying, quote, laying around, he, he typed up a newsletter. He got it printed off. He addressed all the envelopes and he got it mailed. Uh, so he used that infirmity as a chance to settle down and focus on something that that was sedentary. And how do you turn a disadvantage into an advantage? Now back to how to deal with people who discourage you or take away your ability to focus on your business, the business of home living. First of all, increase your knowledge. Collect ideas and techniques about how to handle someone who's threatening your personal peace and interfering with your ability to keep house. It can be something uh, from the Bible, something from outside or inside your home. Discouragement from, outs uh, so discouragement from outside the home is also a problem. Media broadcasts especially, they will often report the worst of things worldwide, making you think, the world is going to hell in a handbasket. Can you imagine what it's like to grow up as a child uh, and the, the adults all around you are telling you, oh, the world, the end is near. The world is going to hell in a handbasket. That's what I used to hear all the time. Uh, it makes you afraid to grow up. <laughs> it's a terrible way to view life. When I was a small, you know, let's go back to Caleb and Joshua that came back and said we could take the lands, but the land, but the other spies that were with them said, oh, it's too much trouble, it's too big, it's too fierce, it's too, uh, it's too harsh. Well, that's the news media, isn't it? Uh, they, they, it's just, everything is bad. And when I was a small child, I heard grown-ups say things like this, and I, it made me not to want to grow up. It was scary being an adult, especially if the world wouldn't even be there. What an awful way to bring up children, expecting the worst and never giving any hope. Other media is constantly sending you, uh, and even Christian media, sending you brochures with requests for help, citing all kinds of atrocities and uh, saying that you're in the richest country in the world while everyone else is uh, suffering and you don't know what to do. You wrestle with yourself. You want to save the world naturally. And women naturally want to take care of people, want to save people. But you are probably barely able to take care of your own family. And there are things you want to do with them, memories you want to create, places to go. But you feel you have to give to other causes instead. And so your children grow up even poorer than the people you're helping. You lose the focus on the things God has given right there in your living room. For your family is your mission, and it's your mission field. And your home is your career. You're not responsible for the rest of the world. Now, in the Churches of Christ, we give in the collection. And that is our that is our total giving. And that could be why we're considered some of the best givers in the world. And then the men decide what will be done with this. And some of the women, too, decide uh, what will be done with this collection to help whatever cause they choose or whatever foreign problem uh, and that that takes care of that and then we're not uh, we don't feel that we have to give to all the other causes um, so let me just think about these people in these glossy brochures that come in the mail and let me tell you that every person has someone a father a brother a son an uncle a relative or friend a minister or other sources of help but if you, are, if you have a family and you're raising children and your home, you're wanting to improve your home or you're wanting to 
do something of value for your family and you haven't got the money to help other people, remember that if you are helping your own family, if you are helping your own children or your grandchildren, you're preventing them from having to beg. You're preventing them from being dependent on the government. You're actually making a great contribution. If you don't put all your strength into your home life, your children will end up like those children on the glossy brochures, without direction, without a home, and without care. Wandering through life without hope. So there are false religions that are just as bad as the news media preaching and teaching this is the most uh, uh, things that that make you upset and when we talk about things that sort of discourage the homemaker terrorize the home make her feel uh, nervous this is the most debilitating and one of the problems is that you can go for 10 years and you have a child who's 10 years old and if you'll stop and realize that he never he or she never has seen their mother happy contented relaxed and not worried and so you're going to have when you when you realize that you're just going to have to stop it you're going to have to straighten up because uh they deserve they it's not their fault and they deserve to have a mother and a father who give them a a happy childhood free from worry and heavy responsibility so so it's very important to keep failures and disappointments in the background and so let's move on to the things that uh, that help you to keep from discouragement First of all, give yourself a fast of media reports. Ignore the percentages. That's another thing that I don't like is that it's not percentages, it's called statistics. Ignore them. I've read many things about those. They are totally, they can't be accurate. There's impossible and a lot of them are made up percentages. And I noticed something that people, uh, two things that people tend to, they can be sitting in a chair all sleepy eyed and listening to people talk and the minute somebody uh, quotes a percentage they perk up and they sit up straight and they listen because we're so indoctrinated with percentages we believe that percentages are the way life is ruled um, but that's not true and um, so give your chance yourself a chance to really live remember Auntie Mame uh, a true story about a, um, a widow who uh, was raising her her nephew she said life is a banquet and most people are starving to death and so she refused to look on the dark side of things um, she her motto was live 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 and so uh, as you get older it's easy to get uh, just sardonic and discouraged and jaded at life but always keep your refreshing innocent youth Uh, we were once with another couple because we were on a special speaking appointment and they were escorting us around their town and uh, their conversation was not exactly uplifting. Everything we said to encourage them was met with a response like, well, that doesn't always work. It's always been bad and always will be bad. Nothing really changes. And, and while these people were quite well off and had done well, they were pessimistic and it was not for, for any cause that I could see. They were just in the habit of being pessimists. Um, they were contradicting anything anyone said, objecting and correcting even the most neutral statements. When we finally began our journey home, I told Mr. S, please stop me if I ever talk like that. I don't want to sink down into the quicksand of defeat while I'm still alive. I want to live. Of course, he assured me that he would stop me if I said anything defeatist and then said you probably won't you probably won't talk defeat or I think maybe he said uh, you probably won't listen to <laughs> he sounded rather defeatist since maybe he needs this lesson and so you remember this phrase I want to live 
every discouraging thought or word does things to your body, not just your mind. Your blood pressure, your heart rate, even your kidneys are affected by your attitude in life. I know some kinds of kidney stones are caused by stress and anger. So, so every time you feel discouraged, you're somewhat closer to dying inside. You're giving your body a blow. Remember, I want to live. Conflict within your home uh, is what I have called terrorism at home. And I believe the news media is a terrorist of the home. If you've got it on all the time and you're listening to it, um, you know, it's going to, it's not going to give you much hope. Um, or if your husband or children make rude remarks or hasty, sharp replies to the lady of the house, those are... There are wonderful women who just spout back with witty remarks. It doesn't seem to bother them. But there are those who are more sensitive, who are not of that nature or ability. They are crushed, and they are brokenhearted that their own support group is not very supportive. Supportive people do not call you insane or crazy, tell you to get medicated, or insist that you need to be locked up. People who say that do not really love you. They are not not loyal they're not supportive and so they need to be taught there are grown-ups in this world that say things like that and they should be identified for what they are untrustworthy unwholesome disrespectful and hateful disloyal unreliable unsupportive you have to quit looking to them for empathy or sympathy or to commiserate with or discuss your own personal ideas with them they will throw you under the bus right in front of everybody when you lose your dependence on other people's approval, you will become much more independent and stronger and you will surprise yourself with your own intelligence and creative abilities. Once you are free of wanting everyone's approval, you'll be much wiser. Disappointment in yourself is another problem. If you run yourself down and fill your head with failure talk or rehearse your past mistakes and sins in your mind, you can't move forward. Remember the story in uh, the old McGuffey Reader. Uh, I don't know if any of you remembered that. It was one of the older ones. Of uh, the man who came across another man on the side of the road and asked him, well, how are you doing? And how's your wife doing? And how's, you know, how's the farm doing? And, how, and to every <laughs> question, he said, well, um, the farm burned down, and um, my wife uh, had to, you know, plant a new crop or something like that. And then, and then my children ran off, and then the horse died, and, and it was just one thing after another. And I believe the title of the article in this McGuffey Reader, Reader was How to Tell Bad News. Isn't that just like some people? And for some people, there's a deep down growling hatred in everyone's chest. A hatred for happiness, a hatred for life. They can't be happy. And it could be fueled by the media because there's a defeatist attitude. And uh, it's fueled by the media's sky is falling mentality. And, you know, that's always been the, always been the case because... Why would the story of Chicken Little ever be have been told? If you remember, was that uh, one of the fables or some some English uh, parable? Chicken Little, the sky is falling, the sky is falling. And did you know that the Bible forbids this kind of thinking? It teaches we can take the land. And it shows how the spies that went in did not please God with their defeat mentality. God did not allow them to become part of the victory they couldn't share in the land. So avoid defeated mentality, gloomy outlook, no can do. I've heard, um, who is it that says, there's somebody online that says stuck like Chuck. <laughs> Nurturing depression, not overcoming, not growing spiritually. Uh, rise above the defeat. That's not the way Christians are told to live. Look at Philippians 4, 8. Now, so I've got some positive things you can do. First of all, you can keep well. This is so important because women at home are their, it's, it's like your tool. It's like your machine, your sewing machine. 
You have to oil it once in a while. You have to keep it clean. You have to give it a rest. You can't let it get real hot and just keep using it. And so you are going to have to give yourself a regular period of rest and that that rest has to be deliberate. And others may say, oh, look at mom. She's just laying around. But uh, you're not laying around. You're re you're you're getting um you're recreating or it's it's just like anything you know you have to go get your car serviced and you, you're just getting serviced if you're sitting down having a cup of tea and you're reading or you're just resting you are recreating and this has to be deliberate and it's hard isn't it especially we in the western world who love work and we love accomplishment. We love creating. We love our homes. And uh, we're on our feet. We want to go, go, go. But we have to learn to deliberately recreate. So keep well. Take care of yourself. When you get up in the morning, look at what you need to drink or eat to keep your body alive and healthy. Take care of your skin. You know, uh, your, your, uh, your skin is your, uh, the outer piece of your immune system. So you're compromising your skin if you're not taking care of it. Um, right now I'm having an awful time with, uh, with skin outbreaks in, on my face. And um, I was just wondering, wasn't that supposed to end when you're a teenager? <laughs> but today I have a lot of interesting ideas for skin care. And, and what I'm wearing today is something out of my pantry. And it's, uh, I've mixed uh, cocoa powder with cornstarch. And I have mixed uh, beet powder with um, olive oil. And I've done a, a number of things, uh, put a number of things on my face here uh, for the video so that you don't have to look at my scarred up face. Um, the other thing is keep dress up. So I said keep well. The other thing is keep dressed. Keep dressed well. Keep dressed up. You know, these little children that you have, you're providing memories for them. You can't go back and re-raise them once you've changed. You, you have to give them the best impression of their mother, the best impression of womanhood, the best impression of the home that you can, and make it happy and make it pleasant. And mother... Please look pretty. Your children will tell you that you're pretty and they'll appreciate it. Don't stop caring about what you wear. Don't stop caring about clothes. You know, even in the uh, Old and New Testament, the Bible mentions clothing many times and how important they were in many different events and um, the clothing that was bought and the clothing that was made, the clothing that was sold. The clothing was, is a big deal in the Bible. And yet, moderns think, oh, that's, you know, I don't care about clothing, you know. Everything about them is intellect. Everything is, is uh, smart. Uh, but clothing is very important. And I remember a dress I wore that I had made when my children were real little. And the, the littlest boy said to me, I just love that dress. Because what I had done is I'd gone to the fabric section of the, of the fabric store that had... Um, for babies, for baby prints, and they had little bears, little teddy bears, and little dogs, and kitties, and things, and I had bought some fabric with little panda bears on it all over, and I'd made a dress out of it, because he used to lay down on my lap, with his head on my lap, in church, and he just loved looking at that, looking at those little panda bears, he said that was his favorite. The other thing is, uh, keep upbeat in your in your responses in your conversation and in your mind and in order to correct any problems with that you have to you have to keep track you might need a little notebook or just mentally keep track of how many negative replies you give now somebody said I sounded real new age because I used that word negative but what I'm talking about is we're thinking about the spies in the land of Canaan the ones that came back with a bad report. How many how many bad report remarks do you make in a day? And when you do that, you're also feeding your mind defeat. So is it any wonder you sink in depression into depression later on? 
and we've all been around these type of people where oh we just want to get away from them life is just life just sucks doesn't it when you're around these people everything's bad and they uh, they object and contradict everything and they're not upbeat they're not happy they're not can do people so you keep uh, up the because if your mind is crowded with bad news uh, it will affect the way that you feel and the other the last thing is to keep your house orderly now I would recommend if you're really having a struggle with that to join flylady.com used to be sidetracked home executives and it's very helpful because it helps you focus back on the home and it affects your mind too if you're starting to get depressed or discouraged getting back into your homemaking and seeing results does uh, take away the confusion out of your mind and uh, you feel start to feel normal again that crazy feeling goes away so I would really suggest getting a, a homemaker coach online that will help you or join the, the free part of Fly Lady. So now what I want to do is share with you some of the things that I like to watch on YouTube. And th this is just some of the things that I put in my mind because I like them. So some of it's political, some of it's religious, some of it's decorating and some of it's just um, what I call Twinkies <laughs> you know just absolutely um, just absolutely fun so first one I will admit is a young man and here's another thing I want to tell you these young positive people uh, I'm just so I like to congratulate them and I always give them a thumbs up because it's just uh, really nice to see the younger generation being upbeat and positive and success oriented. So this one is called the Amazing Lucas, the Amazing Lucas, and he does videos on how to correct your thinking uh, and how to be more positive. and And he's very political too, and uh, and I find him extremely interesting. The other one that I like and some of you like too is Diamond and Silk. I love the way they, I love their enthusiasm and their positiveness. I love it. Olivia's Romantic Home. She shows things that she does at home, cleaning and arranging and of course her dollar store crafts. Very interesting. I guess I like watching other people do things that I don't intend to do myself. Anything to do with the home anything to do with cleaning uh, like clean with me uh, and then they speed it up you know that's that's always fun because you can see the difference between the beginning and the end and the other one is uh, the bright side the bright side is a series of videos that show things you can do naturally and I like to watch them because they often have things that help with your using foods fresh foods for your hair complexion and and other things, how to fix things. I like seeing how things are solved and how things are fixed. World Video Bible School. These are a series of speeches based on um, Bible things and dealing with uh, the New Testament and salvation and some of the Old Testament. And I really like listening to them. I also listen online to the Bible being read now some people can't sit down and listen, can't sit down and read or they you know have poor eyesight or they just don't enjoy reading but you can hear it and you can get through the whole Bible sometimes in a matter of weeks just by listening to some of these online um, YouTube videos. Uh, the French Cooking Academy I noticed, I start, first started to watch this man, he's a Frenchman that lives in Melbourne, Australia, and he has the French Cooking Academy. And I started doing the things that he was doing, and I discovered that many of the foods he was making were foods my mother made. Now, she was just uh, born, I guess, in a sod house with uh, in the, a prairie, in a prairie in Alberta, Canada. Uh, but her people were 
uh, very good cooks and my mother was such a good cook and she could make so many things taste good and one of the reasons is she knew some basic things she knew how to make things tender she knew how to make things full of flavor very very flavorful and um, then I like any clean with me videos I m mentioned that before another person I really like who's also a young person and by the way the um, the French Cooking Academy is also a young man and I just like people that uh, have success and, and try for it themselves you know nobody can give you success you can you can get it yourself it, no one can actually give it to you um, some people have just used the simple platform of YouTube and made a success of themselves and and lived their dreams this man wanted to be a cook well he's just doing it on the video and so Shay Whitney, S-H-E-A Whitney, is somebody else I really like. She's a very positive young woman, uh, and she shows women how to look nice, how to feel nice about yourself. And uh, she does a lot with um, hair and clothing and also does, does do other things with her home. Now, I've liked, I've en also enjoyed watching Messy Updo's. I don't know if messy updos are still in vogue, but I was fascinated with them because I have frizzy hair. And so I enjoyed watching messy updos. They're absolutely charming. That's some of the videos that I watch called messy updos. Another woman that I really like, and she's young too, Lingua Marina. Lingua, L I N G U A, Marina. She is a young Russian woman living in a Silicon Valley in California running a business. And she had several videos that I really, really enjoyed about uh, speaking English American, the American way. She showed things that are not always obvious to us. Like I just said, obvious to us. She showed how you have to slur, uh, you have to have a continual uh, easy melodic way of speaking in America like things that are obvious to us you would not say things that are obvious to us you have to, one word slurs into another and she brings a lot of interesting ideas she should really get paid for this because she, her speech lessons are just wonderful she also goes back to Russia sometimes and she shows um, you know things that are different in Russia and uh, between America and Russia and I find her absolutely fascinating and she loves America too that's nice it's nice to listen to people who aren't running down uh, the country that has given them success I also like dazzling designs by Denise she's another dollar store lady that I like to see what she does with the things you can get at the dollar store I don't I have quit doing things from the dollar store uh, for now I'm trying to cut down on everything and 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 get my home where it's less um, there's more space here but I like watching what other people do another one that I really like is Patriot Nurse she is a young widow um, who gives free lessons online about taking care of yourself what she even had one trip you could take to the dollar store and find things to uh, to take care of yourself show what all you can get at the dollar store in uh, in the way of a wound care and things like that um, and I like any videos on skin care using um, masks that you make out of blended things like avocados with lemon that kind of thing so I want to thank you all for coming here today and I hope that you'll use this video uh, for when you need to listen to something as you're as you're doing some methodic thing at home and you don't have anyone talking to you and you need to hear something and so just turn it off and on and that's why one reason that I have made it so long so thanks for watching if you care to donate you go to my blog and I have a little PayPal button there I really really appreciate it I appreciate everything everyone's done for me it motivates me I have so much more planned I've got things I want to sew I have a passion for sewing um, oh I also want to mention that other YouTube videos I watch are how to make your own cosmetics with natural food ingredients I also watch and I do them low-impact exercises and uh, 
so in the meantime uh, if I hopefully will begin doing more videos I had a bit of stage fright with this one because I had not done one in such a long time so I want to thank you for visiting and I want to thank you for um, all that you've done for me um, these last years and for your prayers especially and Mr. S seems to be doing well his foot is healing and I've had a little bit more time now to sit in front of a video so please leave a comment on my blog I'll leave you a link for it here thank you God bless and goodbye